So this is then how government is immoral. Mm -hmm. This organization that calls itself the government mm -hmm. then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems mm -hmm. versus a plurality of nonviolent solutions mm -hmm. that you and I already share. Mm -hmm. So that's how government is immoral, okay. right? It kind of contradicts and mm -hmm. tricks us into compromising our own moral virtues mm -hmm. and values that we already hold. Um, are you open for feedback? Yes, please. Okay. How do you suggest that we live in day-to-day -day life, live, not survive, right. um, going against the grain or going against government's wants and needs for us as citizens? Right. Uh, yeah, that, that is a very uh, difficult thing to do. To go mm -hmm. against the grain means to, to have courage, right? Because mm -hmm. if it's easy going, then that's not courageous, yeah. right? Going against the grain of uh, what is popular in terms of people thinking, oh, you know, this politician mm -hmm. will provide you this kind of um, liberation, which has never happened. Time mm -hmm. and time again, we've been kind of fooled and tricked over yeah. and over again, right? Um, so I would say at this point, it's like, to go in what our values are, that we don't use violence, I don't advocate for violence, um, I look at government as an institution of violence, so I would turn away from government and just try to live my life consistently in alignment with my virtues, with my own interactions with individual people, with my own community, right? Uh -huh. I don't use violence to, to hurt them. Mm -hmm. The only way government knows how to hurt them is through violence. Mm -hmm. So I would say, then as a community then, we try to solve our problems within these kind of discussions without politicians, without the police, mm -hmm. without government interfering or I getting in the way of any of that. I agree. Right? Um, and that's kind of where we want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a better direction for us to get to a place of peace, of freedom, mm -hmm. of uh, economic in, uh, independence yeah. would be through a way that's uh, founded on these virtues that we already share then continue to beg and beg for, for these politicians who don't care about us, right? They only care about getting elected and getting their campaign money and. Um, I mean, you look at Bernie Sanders, who's now supporting uh, Clinton, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, Wall Street is bad, yeah. uh, or it's not I'm that bad anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, it's never been in our vested interest. It's all, uh, you know, Game of Thrones theater mm -hmm. for them at our expense. Mm -hmm. And I would say, if we really want freedom, then we're going to have to kind of seek it out within our own our own selves mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, and without politics, no. Uh, Democratic Party, Republican Party, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. We're just here as uh, individuals mm -hmm. and kind is of. Is it frustrating aside. if you can't really, not can't get your point across, but is the purpose to get everyone to conform to your beliefs? No, but is it frustrating when people don't necessarily get it? Uh, I would say um, a lot of people do get it. Okay. Yeah, because okay. the thing is, uh, so that's why I record these interviews, because okay. a lot of people it's like, well, I get it, I'm virtuous, yeah, I'm moral, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't, think <laughs> I don't know about everyone else, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so like a majority, I'll say like 95% of these conversations are people just like this, like, wow. yeah, I believe I am people, that I'm a moral person, yeah. I don't use violence, yeah. I believe in the good yeah. and in peaceful people. Um, but I don't know about everyone else. Yeah. So I record these interviews to show, well, here's uh, 400 people okay. here in Richmond okay. who also believe the same yeah. way and also, I guess, kind of feel alone, I guess, in that, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. the last thing government wants is for us talking to each right. other, right? right? They want us marching into the voting booths every right. four years and say, that's right. your voice, pulling right. a lever is a voice, right? Yeah. Don't use your real voice, yeah. right? Yeah. And then we'll find out, yeah, actually, uh, we don't have to be, I guess, uh, wary of one another as yeah. government would want us to be, right? Government True. wants to take like the parental role, you know, right. report each other and, you know, we'll, we'll right. take care of you right. and they cause most of the, all the yeah. problems to begin with. That's so true. Right? Okay. Yeah. The organization that I'm with is called Liberate RVA. Liberate. Um, so it's mostly just liberate us from politics, liberate us from uh, people like politicians who can tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, with your money, with your mm -hmm. car, uh, but you can't tell them the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we want to create a free society based on consent here with rules you give explicit consent to. Um, and not so much like you have rules in your home, but they don't transcend across the river into my home. Right. Uh, we can all have respect for our own bodily integrity, and that's their money, that's their house, that's their car, that's their land. Government, on the other hand, will say eminent domain says that's not your land. Property taxes says that's not your house. Right. Uh, passing laws for like uh, mandatory uterine uh, uh, sounds will say that's not your body, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of areas in which government invades our privacy and in our lives and controls really, us, yeah. right? Um, let me give you a little flyer. Check us out. We have a lot. Of, we have monthly gatherings. A lot definitely. of, I guess, economics discussions and okay. whatnot in that endeavor. Um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in coming. Cool. So, <laughs> Go ahead. No. Oh no. <laughs> you want to come in the camera? Yeah. 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 I had a question. So how yeah, do, yeah. How do how do you live? You know, like okay. So come a little closer, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So how do you 
I don't I don't think socialism is the is the ideal way to go, but out of the options I have, like uh, with Bernie Sanders' version of socialism, uh, seems like it's the best. So how can you? And I kind of understand, you know, uh, with your with your uh, the the idea that you're portraying, with your pushing. So how can those two kind of live in peace? Like I feel like the government should provide like basic stuff like health care, um, you know, police policing, you know, the the basic things, and like some things shouldn't be left to the private market. Market. Okay, so I see what where you mean with this. Uh -huh. So a lot of these things in the past were provided by the market, uh -huh. um, and government didn't like that competition and made it illegal and outlawed it and destroyed it. So you look at okay. like before uh, the Medicare, Medicaid, there used to be a lot of organizations that helped the poor and immigrants like uh, fraternity orders, uh -huh. uh, peaceful uh, friendly societies. There's a lot of black fraternities, there's a lot of immigrant uh, fraternities that came here. Uh -huh. And they were like, if you were impoverished, if you lost your job, lost your lost a spouse, right? It got you know, you'd be able to bounce right back up. Uh -huh. Poverty rates nearly declined next to nothing. Yeah. And then government realizing that if pe this continues, crime. right, as well, exactly, as well as crime. Uh, if they realized that this work to continue to happen. They realized that we don't need government. Gotcha. And so they started saying, well, this code, this building is not up to our codes and standards, right? So you're going to have to pay like 200000 to to fix it. It's like, well, we don't have the money. You're practicing without a license. You're a doctor. It's like, well, you can lose that license. Uh, and just kind of nitpicking everything and then passing laws to shut it down. And then they pass their version of it, Medicare, Medicaid. And that's when poverty rates started going all the way back up again. So like when we look at these issues, yeah, I want health care, I want unemployment insurance, I want all, all this sort of stuff. There was a uh -huh. time where all this stuff was provided, but like I go to VCU, that stuff they'll never tell us in our history books, yeah, right? No, no, they'll just no. kind of skip over it and uh, just not, not mention that part at all. Uh -huh. uh, but that's something that Bernie Sanders doesn't know as well, right? So yeah. there's a lot of people who, <laughs> right, who, who, who don't know a lot of the, the facts yeah. of history in the past. A lot of this stuff was provided. We can't uh -huh. have real security, but yeah. security that will not kidnap you for a victimless crime, right, right. and throw you into a cage in which uh, the police here does today, okay. right? And are you, are you not afraid that self-greed will disrupt that private... What kind what, what's... Like, like uh, self-greed, like, greed, you know, greedy people, like, will distort that that uh, private market, especially in a capitalistic society, like, you know, it's like, make about making money. Well, everything's money about, everything. well, everybody profits off of, yeah. right? If nobody profits, we all starve, right? Uh -huh. I'll trade you some money for this bread, and we both yeah. profit, right? Uh, in terms of money, though, that's another thing that, uh, I guess, taxation does a lot to kind of steal from us nearly half our income. We add up local, city, state, federal sales tax. Everything you bought has been taxed. Mm -hmm. All the restrictions on, on people trying to create businesses, entrepreneurs like uh, Tennessee, I believe, you, you have to have like over 300 training hours mm -hmm. just to wash hair to be a barber. Oh, wow. So a lot of ways to kind of restrict the educated, uh, the impoverished people here to try to get up there and compete in that market. Mm -hmm. But when you have government and those government laws, yeah, they can use government laws to their advantages to put down competitors so they can't compete with them, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Uh, so I would say without that interference, it goes into a, the real playing level where the person who's in charge is the consumer. Yeah. I don't like your business, but yeah. by click of a button, cancel and subscribe. Makes like sense. Netflix, a couple of years ago, try to increase their prices overnight, and you're like, please, not happening. Not happen. I'm going to Hulu, click on subscribe, buy, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's Makes who sense. then is in charge, you, the uh, consumer, right? And then they cater to us, uh -huh. right? It's yeah. not the other way around. We're their bosses at that point because they don't have a right to profit. They don't have a right to money. Yeah. Under government, they, they can do that because yeah, they can stop easy. competition, right? Yeah, makes sense. Right? Um, like Dominion Power, that's a government monopoly. No one is allowed to compete with Dominion Power. So that is the only utility yeah. in this region. It's a government-granted monopoly. I don't know that. Right. Okay. So that's what I mean. So yeah, they will have a lot of money. That would yeah. seem kind of greedy. Yeah. Uh, but no one's allowed to compete. It's illegal. ABC stores is a monopoly. No one's allowed to compete against ABC stores, no, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of government-granted <laughs> monopolies yeah. that we, right. we don't have the economic freedom to cancel or just subscribe or compete entrepreneurially to say, you know what, I can provide you a better service. It's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that's, that's how it would work. <laughs> Find a real economic freedom, right? Yeah. No one can tell you what you can and cannot do with your property, right? And that's what a license is. A license says, I gave you permission to use your scissors to cut hair, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, look, who are you to tell me be to begin with what I can and can I do with my own property? Mm -hmm. But that's those licenses continue to go up and up in prices and, and value, and that, that kind of hurts people trying to enter the market to provide for themselves. Okay. And right. my last question, who would yeah. you define as an anarchist? As an anarchist? So an anarchist is someone who is against uh, slave masters, political rulers, right? Uh -huh. Anyone who advocates the initiation force of violence, 
unto your life or anyone in geographic region mm -hmm. uh, would, would be a slave master, right? So okay, these would be yeah. like politicians. These would be like police extortions, right? Yeah. Uh, dictating and controlling your life, right? Mm -hmm. At no point can you say no, because they don't take that for an answer, right? Uh, so an anarchist then advocates for consent in our interactions with one another. Okay. The state is based on coercion, right? Because what happens if you don't pay your taxes? Mm -hmm. They kick down your door and take you, right? Yeah. What happens if you don't uh, pay Netflix? It's like, all right, we'll cancel your subscription. If you want to come back, let us know. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no Netflix police coming out your door, right? Uh -huh. so, it would be, so the interaction is then freedom of association, disassociation, freedom of uh, the consent that we have already. Like here, all this beautiful <laughs> association that we have, right? Yeah. This is anarchy. Wherever there's yeah. consent, there's anarchy. Yeah. Wherever there's coercion, that's statism. That's government. Got you. So, okay. for me, anarchy means freedom. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, very keen uh, to pick on that. <laughs> I'm Cal. Stan, nice Stan to pleasure, you. pleasure. Yeah. You are? Mia. Mia, yeah. pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. Um, well, let me give you an extra Yeah, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would definitely love to learn. <laughs> yeah, please, please. We, got a, uh, we do, like, anarchy parties, like, once a month. So, it's like oh, an right. economics club. So, we have, like, a paralegal who's going to come in, like, discuss, like, things that you can do to protect yourself against, like, the, like even parking citations yeah. so there's things that you can do to kind of fall yeah. away and kind of not have to surrender your money for like mm -hmm. for silly things the government insurance. tries to insurance right oh my God. car insurance yeah. yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of that stuff that goes around so we have a lot of good people in the community that wants to kind of i guess empower us with a lot of guess uh not self-defense knowledge against people who are, who are trying to get in our way and, and hurt us and rob from us thank yeah. you so much yeah i'll yeah. <laughs> follow you and uh, Stan Toon. Oh, awesome, like, awesome, you know, awesome. He's like, cow. Cow, cow. yeah, yeah. Right, nice to meet you, you again. You too, Stan, yeah. Right. Pleasure, right. pleasure. Right. Of course. Catch all the Pokemons. <laughs> I just want to add a little commentary to what has happened at Monroe Park. It's getting dark now. And at this park, always, has been a legal criminal in which they will call it trespassing after dark in that particular property, on that particular area at Monroe Park. And... Pokemon Go <laughs> has incidentally brought everyone to that park in such a large numbers that cops just leave them alone now. And no one's being arrested, no one's being kidnapped, no one's being thrown through a cage for a victimless crime. Maybe there's just too many cell phones going around uh, to kind of record such uh, brutal incidences. And that is something I think is very unusual, something that's kind of cool. Not to say that Pokemon Go is going to save the world, but it has at the moment stopped the kidnappings in progress that occur there at the park, <laughs> at Monroe Park, not out of all places. And so I think that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool that it's drawing a lot of people together. Uh, in terms of people talking about interracial tensions, it's bringing community, it's bringing conversations, it's bringing fun <laughs> uh, in an era in which did not exist, uh, especially at night. And I think that is an awesome thing. Um, you know, Pokemon lives matter too. So with that, I think uh, I'll, I look forward to seeing what else transcends from this kind of uh, game. <laughs> um, Team Valor here. And with that, this video goes out to Flugi. Thank you so much for your Patreon support. Stay liberated, my friend, and I'll see everyone at the Virtue Party. Take good care.